Okay, so you may ask, what's the point? Niels, you just showed us maybe a 80% dare animation. Why would, I, why would I care about this workflow at all? Let me show you something. The recording of this whole workflow you can see is 33 minutes and 43 seconds. I only spent 25 minutes fixing some animation, adding some animation to it. So being able to go from essentially nothing to like a one minute animation within under 30 minutes is crazy. And this is why I'm so excited to talk about this, about this workflow. Hey guys, unfortunately it's me again. And if you've been around on this channel for quite a while, you know that I value speed in animation and generally in 3D work in general. So I love working with motion capture. Today I wanna to show you how I clean up those mocap data from an already very potent motion capture data set. So you can get incredible results out of this in no time. I believe you've already seen a demo at the beginning of this video, what you can expect. So let's just dive right into this. And I wanna start with a disclaimer. We're gonna use a mix of software. All of them are not free. So if you are looking for like a free workflow, you can, right? But this is not a video for you. This is not a tutorial for you. We're going to use Quick Magic AI for motion capturing, character creator and eye clone, so the reillusion uh, kind of bundle for cleaning up this motion capture data. So all of those three softwares do have a price tag. Just so you're aware, I know that that's not the jam of everybody. Let's start with the motion capture data. As per usual, I've already done all of this stuff and I'm going to talk about it retrospectively. You first want to go to Quick Magic AI, right? And make yourself a, a profile. Usually I'd say I have a couple of cool discounts for you. This time I don't really have a discount. I have a link down in the description for Quick Magic AI. If you subscribe to one of their plans with this link, then I think you get a couple more free credits. But this is all I can do for, for Quick Magic in this regard. However, I love qu using Quick Magic because in my opinion, out of all of those motion capture tools, single camera motion capture tools that you can get online, I believe Quick Magic to be so far the best, not just in quality for motion capture, but also in what you can do in their software on their website out of, out of the box. As you can see, just upload your video then it's automatically detecting people and you have a couple of presets of avatars that you can drag and drop onto those people. It works pretty well and I love that Quick Magic supports CC and iClone. So this is why I'm re also recommending if you already have the Relusion combo to use the software because going with the CC iClone combo is invaluable. You have a couple of seconds settings in here. You really wanna enable T-Pose don't forget to T-Pose, just start uploading and you're good to go and let the system do their thing. After a while, you see that the system has its difficulties with sitting characters. It's supposed to, you know, it's, it's perfectly handling standing up characters, fighting characters and all of this. With sitting, it has its problem, but I wanna draw attention to the feet, how stable everything is. There's not a lot of sliding going on. There's a little bit of jittering and everything. Genuinely though, this is amazing. The accuracy already is great and the finger, the capturing of the, of, of the fingers is already pretty, pretty, pretty solid. If you wanted to, you could refine all of this uh, within their 2D refinements, in their 2D refinement section as well. In this case, it, I didn't see any use of it. So I just moved on to a very critical step. We now have, if we download it, we now have our motion capture data. You can use this as is already if you want to, but I'm going to show you how to refine some of the stuff that I have issue with uh, in, this, in this tutorial. So we're going to bring this CCIC character now over to character creator and iClonate. Okay, so now that you have downloaded your motion capture animation, you can go to character creator, not iClone yet, character creator, open up character creator, and up here under create, you click create character, and you select obviously the FBX that you've, Im that you've imported. Then there's a little pop-up window that is coming up that it's telling you as what it should interpret this FBX. Click humanoid and apply. And then you get a little selection of which profile it should interpret this motion data as. This, li this little window, select character, select character profile. If you see this, just click cancel. Don't click any CC game, click cancel. We're going to create our own profile. This is, on you only have to do this the first time you work with this workflow. After that, you can use the profile that we just create within two clicks, by the way, it's not a lot of work. 
Um, but for now, just click cancel if this is the first time you're, you're doing this. And then it's going to import your character as like something that has no HIK profile now, which is what we want because if we are this screen right here, we are already in this characterization mode that we want to be in. Now what you want to do is click on this little import icon over, over here. Then there's a little text box coming up. And now you select the profile, you select a CC game. Disable T-Pose. This character is already in T-Pose just with bone mapping. And now you have created your own profile. This profile can be saved with this little save icon over here and you never have to do this ever again. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you now when you import your animation and it tells you, oh, as what can I interpret it? You select the profile that you just saved right now. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do right now in character grid. And now you can work with this animation with any CC character you choose and you like. And I can prove this claim because I just brought over a CC4 character and I'm going to give it the motion captured animation. So I'm clicking file, import, import external animation, external motion, sorry. I'm selecting my tutorial QM over here, perfect. And now when it asks me which motion profile should I use, you click on, on custom and you use your motion profile that you just saved. And that's all you gotta do. Now also the finger, the finger tracking works perfectly. The orientations, all of them are aligned, automatically aligned everything. So you can click on convert. The first frame is a T-pose. And then you can see the motion capture in all its imperfection, but it's working. Even the finger tracking is working. Everything is set up correctly. Now for editing the motion capture data, there are two main ways of, wor of working. First one is creating animation layers within iClone and then fixing all of the targets, all of the, of the poses that you want to fix with animation layers. And second one is reach targets. If you want a specific part to stay completely still or be tracked to another bone for a specific amount of time. I'm using animation layer, as you can see, to correct the pose of him having the hand on, at the back. And I'm using reach target for fixing the hip, that the hip stays within the same place. So he's not floating up and down when he's, when he should be sitting and the hip should be at the same, at the same level. But now it's just a matter of fixing poses, locking down feet, for instance, sliding feet if I wanted to. You can see that I'm just dragging around all of those bones and rotating everything. And I love working with iClone because their tutorials and like their documentation about all of these features is so detailed and it's so potent, this, the software, that after a little adjustment period, you feel at home right away and you realize how amazing the software actually is and far ahead of uh, the competition. In, 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 in my opinion, I slept on the software for so long. I had it, I bought it a couple years ago, but it wasn't until like two years ago that I really used it because I never really saw the reason why I should use it. But as soon as I really got to use the software, I immediately know what I had in my hands. Talking about hands, you can obviously animate all of those fingers and hands indiv individually. However, CCIC also comes, iClone 8 also comes with a library of preset gestures that you can put on the character, which means as you, in this object browser, you can see that I'm dragging like a fist onto the timeline and his right hand is now a fist because he's supposed to hold a bottle out there. And you can do this with the left, left one as left arm as well. Just drag and dropping a couple of those gestures in there. You can refine them with motion layers as well if you if you want to, but this is a quick and easy way to actually get some of these um, fine hands details, fine hand motions in there. If I added a little extra step and I gave it some nonsense lip syncing, right? I had fun on a couch, I was I was miming, I was I was gesturing, I was, I was mimicking, just had a little bit of fun with with Aquaface and his character. So the, the, the mouth movement of this does not make sense at all. It's not supposed to be. I'm just showing that it's it that it is in there as, as as well. This is what we've got. So if we play this if we if we play this animation, uh, can I kind of fast forward this a little bit? I know that it's so this is what we've got after a little bit of fixing motion. As I said the lip motion, everything is temporary. I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun doing this. <laughs> I don't even remember. I don't even remember what I said. You can see that there is a lot of clipping in the hands as well. You can, you can check that, correct that if you want to as well. 
Here I brought it over to Blender and uh, to see how it looks with a little bit different, different lighting. Okay, so you may ask, what's the point? Niels, you just showed us maybe a 80% their animation. Why would, I, why would I care about this workflow at all? Let me show you something. The recording of this whole workflow, you can see from uploading until we're done is 33 minutes and 43 seconds. I only spent 25 minutes fixing some animation, adding some animation to it. So being able to go from essentially nothing to like a one minute animation in under 30 minutes is crazy. And this is why I'm so excited to talk about this, about this workflow, because it's not just about this demo that I prepared for this video. It's being able to imagine where this could be if you put in an hour of work or two hours of work, hell, even like a day, a work day's worth of work and compare it to like your traditional animation workflow. Obviously, this video was just an overview over a workflow that I really like when doing animations. This was not an in-depth tutorial about any of these steps. I can do an in-depth tutorial if you really want to let me down. Let me know down in the comments below if there is interest in having a deep dive into some of these topics. Other than that, I hope that I could inspire you for like finding a new workflow that you might use for your for your next animation that you can be quicker and more efficient in your next animation as this is always my my mantra that speed is king in a lot of in a lot of fields where it's not just about hobby. A reminder that there is a link down in the description below for quick magic if you click on this link and you happen to, to pay for plan you get a few extra credits. And with that said Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for stepping by. Like and subscribe, obviously. Give me some engagement down in, in the comments. Here are my socials. And I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully.